Welcome to Unique Cars TV. We've gathered together for the four top shelf Aussie muscle cars of the early 70s. Well, this is the comparison that every Australian muscle car enthusiast wanted to see in the 70s. But of course, it never happened. The Leyland 47V, it was a casualty of Leyland's closure and the shoot off that we all wanted to see never happened, but we've reproduced it here for the first time. These cars had become more than Bathurst races by the early 70s and there was a very strong market uh, for ex an Executive Express, a GT with the biggest V8 you could get and these cars are representative of that. We see two old school cars, leaf spring rear ends, two new school cars that we're going to take them into the 70s with coil spring rear ends and alloy V8. They're going to be very different and we'll see just how much difference the uh, change in mechanical specification makes. This Monaro is a very important model. It was quite different to the earlier Monaros, which had Bathurst in mind. Holden, meanwhile, had gone to the XU1 for racing. It enabled the Monaro to become a very stylish cross-country coupe. This car still sits on its original suspension height. It was meant to go across any Australian road, flat out with a big, lazy 350. One of the key differences between the HQ Monaro and the Falcon GT is that after Holden prepared the Tirana for racing, the HQ came out looking very clean. It has a clean Chevrolet Pontiac look, and Leo Pruno had just come out of Opal when he designed the front, so it has that nice blend of American and European appearance about it. And it's basically left very clean because they didn't race this car. It, it became a high-performance cross-country tourer. This Charger E55 is a special car. The Charger was brought out very quickly after the Australians realised that the Chrysler hardtop that the Americans wanted us to have was going to be too big and wouldn't sell. Their predictions proved entirely correct. So they rushed out of the Charger on the same wheelbase as an E.H. Holden or a VB Commodore, a much smaller car in other words. This is a very rare version because it has the best version of the small block V8, the 340. Many Chrysler enthusiasts believe that this car was ready to go to Bathurst, but in fact it wasn't. It was brought out as a special luxury model, and anyone who was lucky enough to buy one of these in 72, 73 came away with a very, very nice car. There are quite a few distinctive features on this Charger that the standard Charger didn't have. Special trim, the white and black. Yes, it looks a bit gaudy, but the trim pattern was very unusual. The white vinyl patches on the side made the coupe line look a bit sleeker. It's a red line in the grille and of course the uh, what we know now as the jelly bean alloys but they were quite distinctive for the time and to have them standard on a production model was quite unusual. Chrysler packaged this car as the ultimate luxury version of the Charger. As a result of the shorter wheelbase and the powerful V8 engine it was a little sportier to drive than the others, less of a GT perhaps, but it was still a very beautiful and desirable car. The XAGT was what Australian designers believed Australians would want to cover this big country. They not only had to produce a GT in every sense of the word, but out of these four, it was the only car that raced at Bathurst in this specification. The pumped out rear guards was a very late addition and makes this car look quite different and you can see its competition heritage in its appearance. Because the XAGT would become the foundations of Ford's racing effort, it has many race details on the car. You've got the ducks and the rally panels on the front. You have the wide and rear, rear wheel arches. You have the driving lights. It was prepared for the track as well as the road.
This is the car that Australian enthusiasts were really waiting to see in the showrooms and it's an absolute tragedy that it never got to that point. Only 10 escaped the crusher and this is one of them. Very special car. It, it was going to take the coupe concept to the next level. It had a lift back when all the others had boots. It has plenty of interior space. Its styling started to incorporate the European influence that Australians were starting to relate to. It was actually very unique to Australia and an absolute tragedy that we never saw it in the showrooms. There's quite a few interesting features that this car carried over from the P76 that it was based on. The dash was very comprehensive. It had rack and pinion steering when uh, all Australian cars up to that point didn't have. Flush bonded windscreen, concealed windscreen wipers, and again the lift back. Um, it had coil spring rear suspension. The V8 was all aluminium, which uh, provided optimum weight distribution. So what it lacked in power, it made up in balance. It was a very special car, and it would have been an absolute delight if we saw it on the road. I knew she was the one. The heart's going a million miles an hour, the mouth's dry. It's love, mate. Pure and simple. In 71, this was the fastest four-door car in the world. Back then, you could pick one up for a bit over four grand. Insurance? It's got to be Shannon's. No one knows your passion like Shannon's. And with our multi-vehicle discount, you can even cover your daily drive. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts.